So I've been struggling with my wardrobe lately, and you've offered me a little bit of assistance on this mm-hmm. and, and, and asked me some very good questions about my struggle. And they have pointed me like ever deeper into the problem. And I, the, the problem, as I understood it before talking to you and in response to like your first questions about it, was that I felt like garments for my gender role market segment <laughs> uh, are uh, fairly like immature in in my in in like the the you know price points and like availability to me like like the the th- where I when I go shopping at places where I think I'm supposed to go online or in person for clothes uh, it all looks like little boy clothes to mm. me but for large boys l- large little boys and that's not how I want to look uh, and that is partially a problem of like awareness and shopping and all of that. Um, But you seem to have gone so much further into the problem of garments that the, the question you were asking me questions about geometry and like, like all, Mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And, and, and I, I just, it gave me the sense that you have, you have got you've you've like gone down into the root system of what's wrong with clothes in order to in order to fix this problem for yourself and maybe mm-hmm. for everyone is that true that is an interesting way of putting it and i would say that you're not wrong um, <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely people out there whose work is even more fully consumed by these really profound questions of how are we clothing ourselves and um, how have clothes changed and how have clothes changed due to manufacturing changes, those manufacturing changes being entirely due to profit motive, mm-hmm. capitalism, stuff like that. Um, so there are people who are definitely deeper in the weeds with it than I am, but I also find myself to be deeper in the weeds than a majority of people. Mm-hmm. And this is in large part because I... Uh, really care about appearance, but not appearance for the sake of adhering to expectations of Mm. appearance, appearance in terms of um, clothing myself in ways that feel reflective of what is comfortable for me, genuinely comfortable, not just um, couch comfortable, you know, Mm. Um, what is sufficiently expressive of my values. And then... um, you know, what adheres to, um, how do I even put this? Um, uh, Maybe I'll put it this way. I I recently, relatively recently came to recognize that um, if I were to attempt to define my gender using a single word that is not man or woman, um, I would identify as a unicorn. And I don't mean that in the way that um, people looking for a third mean a unicorn, (laughs) Uh, just to be clear. And there's something about um, the, uh, like a purity of self-expression that allows other people to also access their own innocence. And there's a way that garmentry participates in this, which is to say there are garments that, you know, like right now, for example, I'm wearing, um, I'm wearing this like linen top that, um, it's made by this designer based in Canada. The brand is called Ovate for those of you who are curious. They make primarily for, um, more curved bodies than, um, you know, quote unquote masculine bodies or whatever. Um, but it's made out of linen. It's historically inspired. It's loose. It's comfortable. I don't need to wear undergarments under it, even though it's inspired by a garment that you would wear over a corset, which Hmm. is really interesting. Um, and there's something about this particular shirt that feels as though the, like, I don't know. When I try to talk about this stuff, I'm just like, wow, somebody's going to think I'm so shallow. But it's actually <laughs> super deep um, <laughs> in that like, there is something about a garment like this that feels true. And that sensation of feels true um, is 
what I would call kind of like unicorn heart quality, mm. right? Like there's something about the um, not trying to adhere to expectations, but also not trying to like fight expectations. There's something else that's happening that's just kind of being and being facilitated in being. Mm. And garments can do that. And a lot of people never get to experience that mm. because of the ways that um, consumption patterns and manufacturing patterns curtail our access to playing with clothes. Mm. I was going to ask you a question about creation versus mm-hmm. consumption that mm. like your your the 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 expressive mode of what you're talking about seems to require like a creative mm-hmm. engagement with garments themselves and with dressing and making outfits and all and all of that um as opposed to the sort of consumptive mode that has been sold to people in w- places with disposable income as the mode for assembling your wardrobe that turns consumption into like an act of pseudo creation. Like you're supposed yeah. to satisfy your creative urges by choosing things off of a rack and paying for them mm-hmm. is, is, and like, I know that you make some clothing too. Yeah. Can you talk about creating a garment for, and especially in terms of what you were just saying about like neither conforming nor clashing with with expectations yeah yeah so one of the beautiful like i started creating clothes back in um 2012 yeah my grandmother's best friend gave me a sewing machine and i had start started sewing not clothing but other stuff as a kid Mm. um but i was really interested in making clothing because one of the perils of the trend cycle and manufacturing dictates is there are very few normal off the rack clothing items that fit my proportions in a way that feels good and that are made out of fibers that Mm -hmm. feel good to have Mm -hmm. against my skin. Um, I am persnickety. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've gotten progressively more persnickety about what, uh, what fibers actually feel right against my skin. I'm forever sad that wool and I are no longer friends. Oh, that's a tough Uh, one. It's real tough. Yeah. Um, linen, silk, especially linen, cotton's great. Um, th- we are besties. But um, the attempt to make clothing was in part because there was nothing that I, that there was nothing available to buy that I felt good about spending my money on mm-hmm. and that um, it fit me, that like stylistically it fit me, fiber-wise it fit me, and then ethically it fit me, right? You know, no such thing as ethical consumption under capitalism except Mm -hmm. pussy or something. But like, (laughs) um, you know, there are um, levels of, um, I don't know, integrity in terms of how we spend our money. Sure. Um, So I started making clothing because I wanted to stop feeling like I needed to change my body in order to suit the trend cycles and instead could make clothes that fit my body. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and it was great and exciting. Like I remember the the first like I made a linen button up shirt in 2013 and it was like sparkle eyes. Um, I don't have that shirt anymore. Hmm. But um, you know, the process of making a garment that is to say, you know, figuring out how to adjust the pattern to suit my own body, doing test garments, um, figuring out construction methodologies. You know, like how you make a garment as an at-home sewist um, is very different from how garments are made in factory settings. But there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot more. Like I found myself having a profound deepening of respect for the process of garment making just by learning how to make garments. Hmm. Um, And... There's like just, you know, there's so many choices that go into making your own garment. What color do you want it to be? What what fi- fabric do you want it to be? Are you making a pattern from scratch or are you using a pattern that somebody else has produced? And if you're using a pattern somebody else has produced, how are you adjusting it to suit your own uh, preferences and needs? Um, what are your finishing processes? Like there's there's a vast amount of um, deliberateness and intentionality that goes into making a garment for yourself um, that 
I think also then opens the door to understanding how garmentry is a way of making the self. Mm. Because humans are deeply visual creatures, right? Um, you know, at one point in, what was this? This was like freshman year of college. I was taking a uh, primate evolution class or something, and something like that. And the one of the things that the professor really drilled into us is as primates, humans exchanged our sense of smell for our sense of sight. So mm. other primates will have stronger smell systems, um, but weaker visual systems. And humans weak, like stronger visual systems then participate very strongly in how people look, affecting how we um, judge or assess other people, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going around sniffing people for their pheromones. We are looking at them to do assessment process, um, which also means we're doing the same about ourselves to ourselves. When you look in the mirror, do you look like yourself? Mm. And garmentry participates in the sensation of being oneself. That's really getting to the kind of thing I was asking about at first, about getting into the root system of all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wonder if there is anything you can say about, well, maybe just about perception from the outside in general mm. about mm -hmm showing up in the world dressed in a particular way, but maybe more specifically, like did does wearing your own wearing garments that you made yourself in order to make yourself uh, change the way that you are received in any way? And does that change the way that you mm. present in any way? Mm -hmm. It depends. Um, so I have fewer self-made garments in my wardrobe right now than I used to um, because I had to get rid of a bunch of merino wool things that I made. Oh. Uh, very sad. <laughs> um, and I just haven't had as much time to make things. So as things have, I've either outgrown them or um, they've fallen apart because I wear them to death. Like mm -hmm. my, my wardrobe is less densely um, personally made. But the majority of my wardrobe at this point has been made by people I could email. Mm. I could email the person whose hands put together that garment. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's there is a difference between what I have made versus what another person has made. But either way, I am wearing garments that I've deliberately chosen. I have spent the money of time or the money of money on them, um, you know, like individual garments that for people who are used to shopping at H&M, it's like, how could you ever spend that much money? And it's like, well, in terms of cost per wear, I'm spending less money than you. So <laughs> <laughs> with the garments that I'm wearing that are either made by me or made by another specific individual, um, you know, I'm wearing things that um, would be challenging to just find anywhere. So I'm wearing things that are some level of noticeable as sort of non-normative garments, even though I'm wearing like shirts and skirts or dresses or whatever. Um, and they don't stand out that much most of the time. But there is something to like, if somebody's like, wow, I really love your outfit. And I can say, oh, I made the shirt and then the dress is by one of my favorite designers. Like, there's something very relational mm -hmm. about that that's different than, oh, yeah, I just ordered it off of Shein. Like, I would never buy anything off of Shein. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I think Shein is one of the um, evilest components of contemporary, um, I don't know, merchant tree. I don't know how else to put that. But... Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there is there's a connection that forms whenever, you know, like whenever you see someone that's like wearing an outfit, you're like, wow, that's a really good outfit. Like, but chances are that person really thought about it. And it's kind of like that thing of, um, you know, giving compliments based on people's choices versus things that people didn't opt into. So I could compliment like, I don't know, your lovely blue eyes. And that doesn't mean as much as me complimenting um, your consistency of choices around how you're assembling Tiger Time, mm -hmm. right? Which is an outfit. It is an outfit that sure. you are wearing on some level is um, your creation of Tiger Time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there is also something very satisfying if I'm wearing something that I made and somebody's like, wow, that's so great. And I'm like, I made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a... Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. There's a specificity of delight. And then oftentimes I'm met with, wow, you made that? And I'm like, yeah, it's actually like if you can cook, if you can bake and frost a cake from scratch, like a layer cake from scratch and have it not look like a total piece of garbage, um, you can make clothing. Mm -hmm. It's just different skills. And so th that starts to get into the thing I was asking about early on about about helping other people with mm -hmm. with this. It's almost like showing up in a in a way that didn't like come off of like an Amazon Prime truck, mm -hmm. uh, like as an invitation into something. Like because because choice choices that was the thing that 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 I just picked up on. Like the, the difference between complimenting someone's eyes and complimenting their clothes is is that they didn't choose their eye color. And, uh -huh. and so choice becomes this intentional creative act. And what strikes me is that shopping is also like, like the virtue in shopping for clothing is also about making good choices. And then also like cho choosing from your wardrobe to whatever you put on that day. Like, like uh -huh. your like fashion itself is like a matter of good choices or bad choices. Style is a matter of mm. good choices and bad choices. Fashion okay. Thank you. is the manufactured um, cycling of what is considered um, interesting, um, contemporaneous, on trend, um, of the moment, things like that. Uh -huh. Right? Like fashion is an exploration of garmentry and adornment in a more broad sense, whereas style is the exploration and sort of concretization of intentionality on an individual level. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for fixing that. Yeah. And so so like that's that's what you're playing with. Fashion is what you're playing with when you're talking about whether you're conforming to or rejecting expectations. Fashion is this sort of current that moves through all of that in it what that your choices are in relation to and that's mm -hmm. that's something that plays with the perception but but this i, I want to i want to stick with the thing about choices like the 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 thing that mu that feels good about you being able to say oh, i made this when somebody likes something that you're wearing like that's sort of the apex of the uh like the 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 discernment in your choices that like the the mm -hmm. ultimate choice uh, of like make is is like uh, to make this garment yourself and then like to choose uh garments made by someone else who you can email is sort of like another level of like making very intentional choices compared to like mm -hmm. you know clicking on the th promoted suggestion in your Amazon search box mm -hmm. and like no one's too into that choice probably if you if you have to explain yourself I mean sometimes people are really into it like there is there is a subset of people who are into shopping and clothes where there is um you know it's searching for the best possible deal mm -hmm. ah. right or it's searching for um whatever is like the hottest like the hottest trends for the season or whatever and like that that kind of engagement with garmentry is very much that like identity built out of consumption versus identity built out of intentionality and um, self-reflection and honesty right and mm -hmm. i think consumption and like the choices that are mm, presented to us in terms of fashion that mimic style but are not Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that is the, that is the, um, that's the shallow and like kind of dishonest version, right? It's trying on costumes. Like, I think this is another thing mm -hmm. that is interesting to consider is like, what's the difference between a costume and style, mm. right? And there are some people whose style can look very costumey to people who don't think about it that much. Um, but if it's true to that person, if it's something that's been developed intentionally, it just is style that happens to be radically different from the mainstream version of something. Um, and one of the things that clothes, clothes choosing, like deliberate intentionality with clothes can give us is um, that sort of it's like you know that a particular character is that character because of what they're wearing. And when you can tell that the costume department of maybe a movie or a show is really on top of their game, you don't notice the clothes except to be like, wow, that is so 
it's like it's uh it's like a perfectly tuned violin versus clown horns 